Life on Earth is a wonder. What determines the lifespan of plants and animals? Why are we all unique? Why are some born of certain diseases while others are born immune? From large mammals to tiny organisms, we are composed of millions of cells. Inside the nucleus of these cells lie the blueprint of life, one of the most fascinating things on Earth. Deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, the secret of life. Before the 1800s, people thought of genetics as a concept, and they believed it was entirely random. The first piece of the puzzle was unlocked by Gregor Mendel, known as the father of genetics. From 1856 to 1863, he conducted a series of experiments on peas in his backyard and concluded three laws. The law of segregation explained that each trait, dominant and recessive, is passed on to the next generation separately. The law of independent assortment explains that each trait is inherited independently from another. The law of dominance explains that there will be a dominant and recessive trait. The second piece of the puzzle was unlocked by Frederick Meshkar's discovery in 1869. He found a substance he called nuclein in the nuclei of white blood cells, which was later renamed deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Almost a century later in 1944, a scientist named Oswald Avery concluded that DNA was the molecule in charge of inheritance with an experiment using bacteria on rats. However, there were still doubts. DNA contained only four nucleotides. Why would such a complicated molecule that determined your fate be yet so simple? A discovery was then made on 1953 by James Watson and Francis Crick that explained the confusion. They had found out the structure of DNA. April 6, 1928. James Dewey Watson was born in Chicago, Illinois. From a young age, James Watson was interested about life from bird watching. He enrolled at the University of Chicago in 1947 when he was 15, where he was also awarded a tuition scholarship. From September 1950 to 1951, Watson spent his first PhD year in the University of Copenhagen, where he met Maurice Wilkins. He changed his direction of research and started to work at the Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge in England. This is when he met Francis Crick. Francis Harry Compton Crick was born on June 8, 1916, in Western Fevel, and then raised in Northamptonshire, England. Similar to Watson, since an early age, he was fascinated with science and even refused his parents to go to church at age 12. He graduated from University College London and started research for a PhD. Unfortunately, his work was stopped by World War II, where he worked on magnetic and acoustic mines for the Admiralty. In 1951, Crick started working with Watson at the Cavendish Laboratory with the same interest in the structure of DNA. The mystery was how the four nucleotides, sugar, and philosophy backbones were arranged. Their first attempt was a triple helix, however, that wasn't a success. They continuously built three-dimensional models of the DNA structure for two years. After many attempts, they built a double helix structure from a drawing they created. On February 2, 1953, two young scientists claimed probably that they have the solution to the biggest mystery in biology. Their work was published in Nature magazine on April 25, 1953. Many scientists then did not believe their conclusions, and it was not accepted until much later. Their work was proven with X-ray crystallography by Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. Unfortunately, Rosalind Franklin passed away in 1958 at the young age of 37 due to extreme exposure to X-rays and therefore was not part of the Nobel Prize. 
1962, the Nobel Prize winner for physiology or medicine was awarded to James Watson and Francis Crick for discovering the double helix and Maurice Wilkins for proving their work. Although their work relied heavily on previous experiments, this major breakthrough in biology changed the way scientists viewed heredity. The field of biology became clear and the previous explanations made sense. Winning the prize was minute compared to the effects of the discovery. The revelation of the structure of DNA showed scientists how DNA could replicate itself. This led to cloning and further studies in the process of passing of genes from one generation to the next. The discovery led the way for modern molecular genetic scientists. Millions of scientists have taken the work of Watson and Crick and applied it in their fields. For example, DNA can be useful for nanoscale engineering. Diseases such as viruses can be examined and observed by its DNA, which allows scientists to provide cures, such as the recent deadly Ebola virus. Scientists were able to take genes from humans and insert them into bacteria, and this led to new medication or, or the production of medications that were around, but now we could mass produce it. So we were able to provide insulin um, for patients who were diabetic, human insulin, not just insulin from other. Um, we were able to produce mass quantities of human growth hormone um, for people. Also been uh, their discovery of DNA and the structure of DNA has led to great advancements in the area of agriculture. When we look at the scientists who are currently working in um, food development, we are now able to insert genes into um, food products, into you know um, produce, fruits and vegetables, and uh, allow them to have sort of the desirable trait. We can't forget how much their work has meant to evolutionary scientists. You know, now there was the proof that you know evolution. Um, we had all this evidence from Darwin, but now we have the genetic proof that sort of these traits were inherited through DNA and that through this replication process, we sometimes had mutations or changes that led to the evolution of new species over time. And I'm a pediatric oncologist, which means I take care of children who have cancer and blood disorders. Um, in medical school, I learned a lot about the contribution of DNA to human disease. There are lots of tests that we can do uh, to decide what type of cancer or what type of mutation someone has in their DNA that contribute to the cancer or bleeding disorder. Um, so things like sickle cell disease, um, hemophilia, thalassemia, and leukemia, they all have genetic abnormalities that contribute to the disease and we can do different molecular biology techniques that help us sequence the DNA and decide what abnormalities are within the DNA of the patient and then we can maybe um, use specific medicines that target the DNA abnormalities um, and help treat their disease and hopefully um, cure the patient. The DNA molecule has also altered art for current times and is described by Martin Kemp as the Mona Lisa of the scientific age. I mean for me as an icon it's because of its legacy. It, it, was, it established a whole field of molecular biology and then molecular genetics and it, in, along the way gathered several Nobel Prizes. Watson and Crick's discovery impacted our society and transformed science. Since now we understand the structure of DNA, we understand how the DNA replicates. This enables advanced technology in engineering, medicine, and computing, and even imprinted on the society and art. Most importantly, Watson and Crick inspired numerous scientists to continue and explore amazing technologies that will benefit mankind. The discovery of the double helix tells us why we are who we are, and this just opens the lock to thousands of amazing wonders. Because you know, life on Earth is indeed a mystical wonder.